Welcome to this lecture. In this lecture, we are going to make our own Nmap module with the help of these libraries. So first of all, you have to go to this website that is nmap.org and slash download.html or simply you can search for Nmap for your machine. And after that, I'm on Windows. That means I'll just download this Windows binary. You can simply click on this installer you will save this by downloading and after that you just download that you should open it and you should install on this drive c drive and you'll see that it is installed in program files and here is a map so next thing is to just copy the installation the file location and after that you have to go to your pc and go to the properties after that advanced system setting environmental variables inside this path you have to just edit here and in my case i've already put this cn map location but now you can simply click on new and you can just paste it over there so now after this you apply all of this you'll just go back here and now we have successfully installed the nmap next thing is to install this python nmap module so you have to open your terminal and simply just copy from here and i'll just go back to the terminal paste it right here after that you have to just install this python nmap i've already installed and now after closing this you are good to go with the coding so before that i'll just open my ideally and show you what we are just doing here so in this lecture we have to make this nmap module and we'll just make a port scanner with the help of this python nmap module so first of all you have to import that nmap that is nmap and now let's instantiate this nmap and let me say the scan is the object and after that i'll say nmap dot port scanner so this is the important class so it is a port scanner if i just click ok there is single pop-up screen that means our port scanner is up and running now so you can now scan the any ip field over here so you have to first type the scan and the method over here is the scan method so in this scan method you have to give the host host name here is ip address so i'll simply give the local host to give you a real quick example after that you have to give the port number so i'll just say 22 to let's check this port number and here the arguments is optional so i'll just left it here and i'll just hit enter it is going to scan us and it will just come after a minute so let's wait and let's see its result it will take some time and give you result like this so you can see you have the dictionary over here the result is in the form of dictionary containing some of this information you could see the host over here you could see the version you could see the name you could see everything over here you can see the services you can see the method which is obviously the syncing method we'll see all of this in the next minute but for now you can see this is can info which is tcp protocol over here and now you can just reference each of these keys and values of this dictionary so if you want let me say command line you can simply do something like this scan dot and command line so if you see this and if i hit enter you are going to get the command line over here and the next thing you can also do is you can also get the protocols all of these protocols of this scan so you can have something like the ip over here so first of all it should be ip which is obviously our local host and if you scan and get all the protocols with this all protocol method and if you just hit enter you'll just get tcp over here which is our protocol if it has more protocol than tcp it will just print out in the form of list so next thing what you can also do is you can also see the state if it is running or not so we'll just say scan again and localhost which is obviously this host we are just scanning and now i have to just see the state if it is up and running or not if i hit enter 
it is saying up because it is running so you can just check all of these states and uh, all of these can value pair from this dictionary so you can also check something like the host name if you let me just grab all of this which is obviously our host and if i just check for the host name with this host name method you will see it is localhost so you can do multiple things from this nmap port scanner which is going to scan us with this host name and this is the port to be just search and next one here will be the argument so argument will be in the form of the characters and uh, you can just search in the google so something like this will appear so these are all your arguments so if you see yes v over here it is the probe it is basically searching for the open port to determine the service version input that means if you just go back to our ideally this csv argument refers to the open port because it is searching for the open port to determine the service and version info so these are some arguments to be searched so we'll make now our own nmap scanner and we'll see how we can just scan the ip addresses with the udp tcp and the comprehensive scan so let's open our pycharm over here let's do real state coding now so first of all we'll show something like the three type of scan we are going to just encounter over here so first over here we'll be sync scan let me write the type of scanning first and the next one would be your udp scan and the last one would be the comprehensive so first of all let's see about the sync scan which is also known as the tcp scan so this sync scan is the tactics basically it is a way that the malicious hacker or a cracker will use to communicate with the victim's port without establish a full connection that means this scanning will just scan the port number but it won't have any connection with the victim computer this approach is the oldest approach basically which the crackers use and it is also used to perform the denial of service attack and the sync scanning is also known as the half open scanning because in this case we are not connecting fully with the client computer instead we are just having a half open scanning attack over here so next one would be your udp scan so it is also quite similar of that of sync scan but in this case but udp is a connection less protocol that means there is no equivalent to this tcp sync packet however if the udp packet is sent to the victim computer or open port the system will respond with an port that is the unreachable message and in that way the response will indicate that the port is open and we have seen about this sync and udp in the previous lecture so that won't be problem for you so it is basically a two type of scan we'll see in the argument section how these scan differ from each other so let's start coding here so first of all as always we have to import the nmap module so this is the nmap module so let's make a scanner now so first of all we have to just instantiate this nmap module that means with this help of port scanner we have seen about this port scanner in a minute before so first of all let me just give the message to the user saying welcome to our nmap port scanner so this will be the message to the user so next thing is let me just make quite some spaces over here and now after this what you need to do is you need to have ip address so ip address should be input from the user so you know how to input it is going to give us the message to the user saying please enter the ip address you want to scan okay this will be the message to the user it will just input that ip address and let's print this ip address again to the user saying the ip address is you can simply format this with your ip address 
so now what we done it was we just see the IP address so let's see the type of the IP address so you know what this type method does this is going to just return us the class so next thing is to get the response so what this response does is it will just take the input from the user to see what the user want so if a user want to have the sync scanning then it will just get to the sync scanning so what this response does it it will have the flow control that means we'll use the conditional statement to have the flow control between this scan so if a user presses one then it will redirect to the sync scan if he presses two it will redirect to the udp scan if he presses three then it will just redirect to the compressive scan so that means there will be flow control so in order to get that number entered we'll just use input again and if you remember we have this triple code to have the multiple line so i'll just make a multiple line and a single line new line over here that is with the slash n and i'll just say please enter the type of scan type of scan you want to perform so we can just go down because this is a multi-line comment so first of all i'll just give one here saying if you want the sync acknowledge scan and the second one will be udp scan and the third one here will be comprehensive so this will be three scans and if i just put a new line again so this will be the response from the user or basically to the user so after that they will just get that number i'll just print you have selected option and that will be res which is basically the number so they will just get that number let's check now so if res is so if you just do one this is not going to work because if you see this resp is from this input method and we have talked about this in a multiple times before in the basic python lecture that this input method is going to give us the string and this one is basically an integer so we cannot compare this input which is in the form of a string with this one so we have to just pass this as a string so first of all we just compare with the one and if it is the case we have to now do something that is your sync scanning so let's do sync scanning so first of all let's check for the version of the nmap so i'll say nmap version let's print this nmap version first and it will be done with this scanner which you can see here which is the object of this nmap and we'll make use of map version method over here so it is n map version so this method will be called to check the version of the n map that is installed on our machine so next thing is to see that what this scan does so we have seen this scan was going to give us the dictionary so let's see how we can just get the dictionary so first of all first parameter that is to be sent in this scan is ip address which is entered by the user here so the next thing was the port range so i want to check from 1 to 1 to 2 4 the number of port to be scanned is till here and the next one is argument so let's talk about this argument so first of all i'll see v and the next one it yes yes so what we did here was we just gave the argument to this scan saying that it has to just scan with the verbosity and yes is to scan for the sync connect acknowledge windows or minimum scans if you want to know for further then you can just check this documentation online in this book reference page so if i just source for v which is obviously our verbosity so that should be right here it is saying increase verbosity level and you can also use vb for more greater effect so this is your argument which is just we just pass right here and this yes means that we want to just see the tcp sync scanning 
so this is the way to put the argument to our scan method so next thing what you need to do is to print that so basically what we get from here is the dictionary so i want to get the scan info from the dictionary so i'll just say scanner dot scan info so this will be the method so what this scan info does is it will just give the dictionary for the method like sync and services so next thing what i want is the ip status so let's print if that ip status is up or down so for that we have to first of all type the scanner and we have seen this in a minute before because uh, in that case if i just go to the ideally i'll show you over here what we just did was in the case of this state so we just pass here the local host we saw the state which was up running or not so we'll do same over here so instead of local host we have to pass ip address that is entered from the user and now we have to see the state so before that let me just print some messages over here so i'll say ip status and after that i'll just put here the status which will be done with this state method so we have now the state method which is going to give us the status either up or down and the next thing i want to give here is our protocols which will be tcp protocol so if you just see in the ideal again which was right over here so let's make use of this method too so i'll just say scanner and let's put again that ip address inside that scanner and let's check for all protocols so this will be my assets or basically calling the functions to get the tcp and the next thing is to check for the open port and this is important we haven't done this before so we will check for the open ports so to do that we have again this scanner and we'll just pass ip address that is entered from the user now in this case we have to make use of the tcp keys because this is the tcp scanning so we'll just pass tcp and now we'll just get the keys which is for the values so what this result is basically this will give this last statement will give us the dictionary and dictionary will be in the form of the port number so we'll get number of ports that is open so that can be something like the dictionary which will be in the form of 123 or 55 any port that is open will be result from this statement so this is our pretty much the first scanning which is our tcp scan so we have completed our tcp scan over here let's go to the elif part and type something like if the response is greater than maybe uh, 20 then print invalid something message like this now let's check for our first scan so first of all i'll just go to the run run the main so it is showing errors saying that resp is what we just did here we have to check if it is one or not so let's run this again run the main it is saying enter the ip address to scan let me make some spaces over here so i'll make spaces let's stop it again let's go and run this main so it is going to give us the ip address to scan so let's see our ip address from here ip config then you'll just get the ip address 192.168.1.14 so i'll just type here 1.68.1.14 and it is the message that we just get here which is saying input which scan we have so in this case we have only the one which is obviously the sck scan which is sync sck scan so that means i'll just put here one so i'll just enter one now and it is giving us the selected option so first thing that we just get was nmap version because if you see here we are just printing the nmap version so first thing we just get is nmap version 
and the next we get is this tcp so this is in the form of the dictionary which was the result of this scan info method and it is giving us the method which is obviously a sync method which we just did here it was a sy and say method and the next was the services so services was basically to scan the port from 1 to 1024 and next was to see the state if it is up and running or not so ip status is up and the next one was the protocol so protocol is tcp protocol and the last one was the open port so these are the open ports or basically these are the ports that are open on this machine so users get open port from this scanner so in the next lecture we'll complete with this udp scan and the comprehensive scan so see you in the next one <laughs>
get this comprehensive scan so let's do something for this comprehensive scan same as before that is uh, getting this print which is saying that this is the nmap version which will be obviously the 7.70 and next thing is i want the scanner to scan in that ip address that is entered by the user and now it has to just scan every port from 1 to 1 to 0 for so basically this is the range so every here we type at the second argument is the range of the port to be scanned and the next one is the argument so if you get any confusion about this port you can simply google saying that the argument for the end map scan so you will get this document getting all of these detections argument so you can see we have the host discovery arguments over here we have the script scan arguments over here os detection scan over here so we are going to use this os detection now in this comprehensive scan so let's do this so first of all as always we'll just do the verbose scan so ne next one would be yes yes attack which is obviously to see for the tcp attack or basically tcp syn scanning process and the next one i want is yes v and it is yes and v so this one is to check the port to determine the services and the version info of the machine and the next one i want is yes c and what this does is let me just type real quick yes c yes c is the capital and sc is equivalent to the script being the default and let me type the another one which is very important this a in the capital this enables the os detection version detection and script scanning so basically we'll get the version and os with this argument and the next one i want is o for the os detection so if you want to just gain the more knowledge about this argument you can simply search here so if i see o we have just added o over here which is right here so this o argument is saying that this is to enable the os detection so you can see nmap has bunch of these argument but just remember if you add more and more of these argument to your programming it will be more time consuming this time scanning or basically scanning process will be more time consuming if you add more and more option if you add something like let me say if you want to do this debugging level or you increase the debugging level then you can see simply add this small d but i am not going to do that because this will be perfectly for this comprehensive scan so next thing i want to do here is same as before to check the scan info so first of all i'll use this scanner object again and i want to get the scan info which will give the dictionary about the methods and the next one is to check for the ip status same as before and to check for the protocols let me just copy this and paste it over here so this ip status is going to show us if the ip or if the machine is up or down and this will give us the tcp protocol and the next one is i want to check for the open ports so let's do that so here in this comprehensive scan i want to do this tcp open port scan so let me just copy this paste it over here so we have completed our lecture so if user presses uh, above 3 let me say if it is greater or equal to 4 then what we need to do is simply print invalid please enter valid option so this will be the result or basically message to the user now we have completed our code here so first of all let me just run this real quick and you'll just get this message saying into the ip address you want to scan same as before you can simply check your ip address by just going to the command terminal and just typing ip config and you will see this is wireless lan adapter having this ip address so i've just copied over here and now i want this comprehensive scan which is at number three let me just hit enter and it will just do now the comprehensive scan let it give a time it will take more time than these two scanning process so syn attack was so simple that it gave the result within the minute or less udp scan took about one minute now comprehensive will take 
maybe more than one minute let it give a time i'll just pause and give you the result so we get all of these open port now and you can see we get the same result over here which was done in the case of sync but it is more comprehensive than that of sync scanning so we made our nmap scanner over here which will get us the open port the ip status the scanner result and all of this information that we just see over here so you can also see the command line over there so you can do this by your own way so we just made our complete nmap port scanner using this nmap module so this will be wrap for this lecture in the upcoming lecture we'll see more interesting part of the python and how python can be used for more hacking purposes <laughs>
and this is sent over all of the client that is connected in the internet through the broadcast uh, MAC address so after that if it broadcast all of these ARP request then the client will have its own IP address so this has own IP address and this client has its own IP address so this IP address or basically this request which is sent from this client will be ignored by those client who is doesn't have this IP address so if this uh, says something like okay who has this IP address 10.2.1.4 and if this is the IP address of this client which is the computer but not of this mobile that means this message which is ARP request will be ignored by this client and this client will just get the ARP response saying that I am this client which have this IP address back to this broadcast manager and this will see that okay this client has the MAC address and this is the address resolution protocol and the next thing is very important information over here is a MAC address and MAC address is very important because this is not obviously the MAC that we are going to use which is obviously the computer so MAC address is a media SS control address so it is uh, basically the hardware identification number that is uniquely identifying the each devices on the network so I have shown you in our Kali Linux over here that each of these devices will have the unique MAC address which is to identify between these devices so if you send any packet from these devices from one devices to another this MAC address is going to be unique so that that packet can be traced or that packet will be identified or the packet will be delivered to the right devices so this is the important information MAC address so we'll just code this uh, net discover with the help of PyCharm now so before that let me just make you real quick what we are going to do so first of all we have to make the ARP request and then we have to make a broadcaster so in the broadcaster what happens is we'll just send this ARP request saying that okay you need to send that ARP request to the broadcast MAC address which will just determine which clients are connected to network and we'll just get this information of the client that are connected to the network from this port scanner module so in this lecture we are going to make a scapy module so let's get our PyCharm ready and let's see how we can just make our scapy module on port scanner so first of all let me just delete all of this let's go back to our PyCharm so here the first thing what you need to do is you have to just go to your project create a new python file i have already created named is main.py so next thing if you see here we want to go to the settings and under this your project key log which is the name of your project go to the project interpreter and just add the scapy module over here so i'll just say scapy and install that scapy module and i have already done over here you can see right here we have the version of the scapy over here if i press ok now we can get that scapy module to work for us so first of all i'll just import that scapy module all so all is basically to implement every module of the scapy that means we can use everything that is declared inside that scapy module over here and i i want to alias it with scapy so every time when i want to use that escapee module i don't need to write escapee.all instead i can just refer it with escapee so now next thing i want to do is i want to make a function that is going to the scanner function i'll just pass your ip address that is to be scanned so this is our function so next thing is to use this escapee and i'll say arping so this is the method that is going to spoof for us so next thing what you need to do is we need to just make this scanner work with the IP address so if you just uh, go to the command prompt over here and if I source for our IP then it is connected over here so the IP address is 192.168.1 so if I just go here and I'll just pass here 192.168 dot one dot so first subnet in this uh, ipu is going to be the gateway so first of all we want to have the gateway and uh, to include every subnet from one which is obviously this digit 
to 254 we need to just put this hash 24 that is to include every subnet on this network or basically on this ip address so just pass this slash 24 to include every subnet of this ip address so next thing what you need to do is simply go to the run run this main and give it a time to run and it has begun the mission let's see how this works so it has received the three packets and got three answers so these answers are responses and it has shown that remaining 300 253 packets were unanswered that means we just got three answer that means three devices are connected to this network so you can see we got the same that is uh, mac address and ip address that we just got from the kali linux over here which was the net discover so what we just did in this lecture was we made our escapee module to work for the scanner we didn't do anything good over here because it was just a one line code we'll see under the hood how this works in the upcoming lecture but for now what we just did was we just passed the ip address or every subnet of that ip address that is connected over here and we just get this arping to work for us so what we just did over here so let me show you real quick so first of all we just did something like this was a client so basically this is us and we want to give the arp request so it is giving us the arp request so it is just giving us the arp request of maybe 10 so it has the ip address over here so let me go real quick so if i show you here then this is your ip address that is 192.168 so it is just showing us over there so if i just go back and it is just giving a arp request with that ip which is 192.168 and that is one which is obviously the gateway the first ip and after that it is just giving this everything as an arp request to just broadcast manager or broadcast so after that it is giving this to the broadcast mac address and it is just referring to every client that means this every client will be included inside this ip address so they will also give the arp response back to the devices that means it will just capture the mac addresses of each of these devices which is just done in this lecture which is right over here so if you see in the PyCharm, you will see that we just captured every MAC address and got the IP obviously IP is inside this subnet so after that we just get every MAC addresses which is just sending us the ARP responses so you can see we got three answers so this is very important just remember here we got three answers so these are the responses and other are unanswered so there is 253 packet that is unanswered so this is very important we just received three packets that means we have just three connected device to the network so now in the next lecture we'll make our own scanner with the help of the algorithm that we just learned here so instead of just using this arping we can see how broadcast work how to just make the arp request how to just combine those broadcast and the arp request and send to the network so that they will just give us the answer or responses back to us so that we can just modify it and make our complete again this net discover but in more robust way so see you in the next one welcome to this lecture so in the previous lecture we just tried to make this net discover so basically what we just did was we just made use of this escapee module to do that so in the escapee module we just made use of this simple method which is arping method which will just pretty much scan all of these clients and get the mac addresses but in this lecture we are going to do this manually so first of all we have to just create the arp request we'll send it to the broadcast mac addresses and we'll just combine those packet and see the responses of the packet so one thing what i want you to see here is this message over here showing that it has received two, two packets and got two answer so that means there will be the responses like answers and unanswered 
that means we can make use of these responses to list out these mac addresses so in this lecture we are going to do pretty much that so so if you just see here in this figure what we have is this client so this is us basically so what we are going to do in this lecture is we are going to make a ARP request saying that who has this bunch of IP address which is inside this uh, subnet list which is obviously you can see what we just have over here so this will be the IP that will be sent as a ARP request by this client after that we are going to give this to the broadcast MAC address so instead of just giving this ARP request to clients directly we are going to give this ARP request to MAC broadcast or a broadcast MAC address because this is going to give this ARP request to everyone and this ARP request will have the IP addresses of each of these client and that will just give us responses in the form of MAC address back to us that means we'll just achieve IP addresses and MAC addresses of each of the client that is connected to this network so let's do that so first of all as I already said so first task will be to create the ARP request so you can see now we have to modify this code over here so first of all let's see how we can just modified and we can just make use of this code so first of all we have to make use of the scanner class or basically scanner function so next is to create the request so i'll say it is request obviously it is arp request so in order to create this arp request it is done by this arp class so let's make use of this arp class and now this is all to create the request in the python so it is very much easy so you just make use of this ARP class to create the request so next thing you can see is I'll just print the summary first so let's see the summary so summary will give the brief information about this request so let's see let's run this main module and let's see what this works so let it give a time it will take some time so it has shown that ARP who has none says that this IP address so if I just um, open the CMD which is going to be my command prompt to see my gateway so you can see here this is a wireless uh, LAN adapter and this is my IP address so that means this ARP request was done from this IP address so we have successfully created the ARP request now next thing what you need to see here is the broadcast so broadcast is to send to the broadcast mac address so i've already shown you before the steps so first of all we'll just create the arp request which we just created so next is to send or basically to get that broadcast mac address because that broadcast mac address is going to send this arp request to every client so let's make that broadcast now so first of all let's go again to our editor and here I'll just say broadcast so in this broadcast you have to create the broadcast from escapee and we have the ether framework to do that so this ether framework will create the broadcast for us so now next thing what you need to see here is to give the destination MAC address so what we just learned from here in this figure is first of all as always we'll create the ARP request and send that ARP request to broadcast MAC address so here in order to assign that broadcast MAC address we have to learn about the arguments first so let's see what are the arguments that is given by the escapee module so in order to see those lists of argument we have to make use of this ls function and i'll just say escapee we want the argument or the attribute of this uh, ether module so that should be ether and now if I just run this you'll see the list of attribute printed right over here so let it give a time to run so you can see we have here that is DST SRC and a type argument so you can see this DST is the destination MAC field 
which is what we just need because i've already said you that this arp request which we just created over here should be sent to this destination mac field which is obviously the mac address of the broadcast so this is the mac address of the broadcast so first of all we have to make use of this dst so the way to do that is first of all you have to just use this broadcast and give that attribute that is dst and in that dst you have to pass this mac address which is obviously your virtual mac address so it is given right here that is the ff that is six times so let me just copy this and go back here and let me just paste it so this is the way to just assign this broadcast mac address that means now we have created our request which is the first part so i'll just say here rp request is created so next one was broadcast mac so the next thing what you need to learn is to send this packet and this broadcast to the broadcast mac address so let's see how we can do that so first of all let me just remove this because this is going to show us the sum of the attribute that we just need and we only need this dst mac address because this source is us so this is mac address of my pc that means we don't need this we just want this broadcast mac so let me just remove this line of code right from here or you can also comment this out and after that we'll just see some of the information that is given by the broadcast so let's see first so how we can do that is we can just print the summary first so if i say broadcast dot summary so let's see the summary of the broadcast first if i just run this main and let me just make here and it has given the information saying that this is the source mac address that is our mac address which has this ip address and it is just sending the packet to this mac address which is obviously the broadcast mac address this mac address is going to send this arp request to every client that is connected to this network so this is the one step that we just did here we just made use of this arp request arp class to create the request and we just now made the broadcast mac address to be just working on this situation that means we have to now combine this request with this broadcast and we have to send this over the network which will be done in the next lecture so before that i want to make you clear about the some of these uh, requests so first let me so instead of the summary i'll just uh, clear this out and i want to just uh, make use of this so method to show you these layers so i'll just say broadcast dot so again and i'll just remove this and if i just run this main again then you will see that it will just give us some information and these are the some information that we have here and this is the arp layer and we have here ethernet layer which was done by this escapee module so this is the ethernet layer you can see the destination mac address which is our the broadcast mac address this is source mac address and we have see this arp packet over here so you has seen here who has this which is basically the way to show who has that ip addresses in the network so next thing what you need to do is we have to combine these request in the broadcast and we have to send this over the network so to do that we have to first combine these request so i'll just say request broadcast i'll just give the name again that is a combination of both this request and broadcast so in order to just combine this first of all we have to pass the broadcast and we have the special this forward slash which is basically to combine this request and the broadcast so if you wonder what this is about so if you see this is not the division sign in the escapee because we are using this escapee module and in the escapee this is the way to just combine these two packets so we have created now whole single packet over here so this is the way so next thing what you can do here is we'll just uh, again so 
this layer so I'll just say show method again so let me just uh, run this and you'll see the three layer now it will have our rest request first so this is the ARP request that we saw in the previous lecture this was the ethernet that we just made for the broadcast MAC address and the next one here is ethernet ARP combined which is for this request broadcast packet so now we have to do something like we have to send this broadcast packet over the network so that is the way to just send this packet over the network is by using the SRP method which will be covered in the next lecture we'll see how we can just get these MAC addresses to be printed and see the network that is connected to our internet or to the connection so see you in the next one <laughs>
and let me show you what this summary looks like so if i just run this and it is main so if i just run this then you will see that it will just take more time now and um, now it will say that arp who has none says that this is your source so this is your source ip which is going to just send that arp request to the destination mac or basically to the broadcast mac address which is your this mac address which is virtual mac address and if i have to check this machine that is the ip address then you could see this is our source and its mac address is right printed over here so next thing is who has none so this none is basically your this ip addresses that you just pass here we haven't stored anything to here so if you just remember from the previous couple of lectures before this dst was the destination mac address so we just saw how we can just get these references so that was the process to list every argument that was with this ls method and now we have to make use of this arp class to just list all of these argument that we have here so let me just uh, the comment this out because we don't want this summary we want this escapee arp here let me run this main you'll see the list of an argument that is available for the arp now so you could see these are the list that is available so if you see here if you just uh, get the printed this summary too let me just run this one more time you'll see summary will be told over here that is saying arp that is obviously this arp request who has none so if you see here this field is none which is pdst field so this it is none and this sw src field is for the mac address psrc is for this ip address of the client so for now we have to make use of this pdst because this is none that means we can now include as an ip to this field so same as we have done in the case of broadcast we just saw how this was the field for the destination mac address and we just assigned this virtual mac address to this destination mac address now it's time to do that for this arp request so to do that we have the request which is obviously this request and if you see here that argument or that field was a pdst field so this was the field which has this none so i have to now include that this is pdst and that should be ip so you can do this way or there is also the another way to do this and let me show you so the another way to do is inside this parenthesis so simply type to pdst which is the field and now just pass the ip that you just passed over here while calling this scanner method so we have now completed this arp request let me just comment this out which is to print the summary and let me just remove this or basically let me also comment this out so now we have created our own uh, escapee request that is uh, arp request over here we have now created this broadcast mac address which is for this virtual mac address next was we just combine those packets we send that packet with this srp function with the timeout assigned as one one seconds and we get this response so this first one response is answered response and the next one is unanswered response so now let's see how we can just navigate to this answered and unanswered request so first of all before doing that let me tell you this response which is answered and unanswered that we saw in the case of the demo if i show you the output when we just run this demo so okay we haven't run this so let me just run this real quick and uh, this was the demo and this was going to give us that is the answered package and unanswered so this remaining 253 packets were unanswered that means we have to now see what these response are so basically these responses are stored in the form of list so you can check the documentation of escapee to see that in the documentation it has written that these responses that is answered and unanswered are in the form of list so if you just remember what we learned in the list section that list are iterable that means we can loop over the list so let me loop now so for element in this response one 
so we are going for the response one which is for the answered packets so for every answered packet let me just print this first which is this element and uh, let's see how this works so first of all so the thing we want to run is main obviously and let's see if this works or not so okay the next time it works so there was no any problem got three answers it is saying that three is connected so there is three machines or client that is connected to this network so you could see the clear code code over here that is we are getting the response from this SRP and that is on the timeout one we are just sending this packet of request broadcast just remember that pdst was to show the ip address this is important and basically we made this arp request packed with this broadcast map and that is sent over the client which is in fact in the form of the responses so this is response one this is response two and based on that response we just loop because these responses are answered and unanswered so if you just go in the demo you could clearly see it has shown that with the ar ping there is the two packets that is answered and unanswered so first one is answered so we just loop on this answer we just print this one and we get the result so you could see result right over here it is giving us the result in the form of this list containing two part so let me show you here this contains two part so this is one part and the next part here is this part so you can clearly see the next part is this long part so if you check the documentation of escapee they have written that the first part which we have seen right here so you can see there is a two part that is containing one part over here so you can just distinguish this with the comma so there is comma in between them so first part here is the input part or basically this is the request part and the next part over here is the response part so this has the three clients that is connected to the network so first one is obviously the gateway second one is this client and the third one having this ip address and you can go over here to see the mac address so you can see this is the source that is having the mac address you can get this mac address with this hw dst that is for the mac address we have already seen this while we just make use of this escaping so let me show you right over here when we just see this arp so let me just list out again so with the escapee and it should be ls and let's go for this arp let me just list out the things that is going to show us the argument that is denoting us about the mac address and the ip address so you could clearly see over here this sw dst was okay this sw src was for the mac address and pcs rc was for this ip address which can be also seen right here so this is your mac address we have another this is the ip address so we just get some of this client that has just connected to us or basically they have sent us the packet in the form of arp response we just get this response so you can also see the uninsert part with this response too if you see this is the response too which is uninsert so let me just run this uninsert part over here it will just take some time because it is much more than that of answered one so there was uh, a small answer one they were quite of three but this you can clearly see there is 253 packets that is on answer only three were answered that means three client were connected 253 packets was dismissed or basically this was not doing anything this means this packet was not giving any arp response but these three client gave arp response that means there are three client we got their mac addresses we got their ip addresses so now let's see only the ip addresses and the mac addresses from this response one because this is all the unnecessary information that we get from here so let me just comment this out first and if i just run this main again you will see we have these responses in the form of this list 
you can see this is the list and this or basically you can also see the tuple so this is a tuple and this tuple contains the request part and the response part so we don't need this request part because this is unnecessary information we just want this ARP response part because this has the critical information about the MAC addresses and IP addresses so let's get this part of the list or a tuple so you know the list or a tuple indexes start from zeroth index so here in let me just okay where is this run so this part or basically before comma is at zeroth index and after comma is at one index or first index that means we can now get the first part of this element so let's do that first so we can do something like okay here uh, I'll just say that in the element I want only the first part not the zeroth part because zeroth was the request we don't want the request and we have now only the response part you can also do something like here because this response I've already told you this responses are also in the form of the tuple that means we can also get only the request part from this zeroth because the zeroth is the insert part if you want the uninsert part that will be at one but we want the insert part that will be at zero and we get the response which is the insert response we just loop on that and we get the insert that is insert responses if i just run this now we'll just get the information that is much more available or basically much more valuable than before so now you can see we have now information that is in the form of gibberish so we have to now filter this so in order to filter what you can do is use the argument so we have learned how to take the use of p that is yes rc and the next one would be to print the mac address so it will be element one which is showing us that this is the response and yes w yes rc is for the mac address so this psrc is for the ip address and this is for mac address We'll just get this information let me just print this one more time you will see now it will just run its code and it will get us the ip address it will get us the mac addresses ip address mac address so let me format it here after every print or basically after every client i want to print some spaces so this much spaces will be enough let me just run this again you will see now it will format it will just give us the information that is much more efficient so let us go over here you can see there is three client this is the gateway this is the mac address this is the gateway this is the mac address this is the gateway and this is the mac address that we just catch from these responses so in this lecture we just made a complete scanner using this escapee so first of all we just made the arp request we bind it with the broadcast over here by using the skp forward slash we just send that to the broadcast mac address which is done by this srp which will send this packet to all of the client we just get the response from the client which is insert part if you want to see the uninsert part it will be at first index and now we just loop around it but in this case the information that is valuable will be at the zero because we want the insert part because the insert part will be connected clients so we'll just get the insert part response we'll just loop on that we we'll just get this ip addresses and mac addresses we we'll just format it and we'll just print this in the way that normal scanner will do so this is the same scanner that will be something like we do in the case of a native discover which is the kali linux tools we can also do the neon map scanner which is the case which we just get the mac addresses and ip addresses of the clients that is connected in the network using this program so we just made a complete program which can work as a scanner so this will be wrap for this lecture see you in the next one